Hey everyone, CPO here, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over the AutoTech high pressure fuel pump internal install in my 2019 Golf R. This will also apply to pretty much all of the Volkswagen Audi Generation 3 TSI motors. So the most important elements for successful install, number one, has got to be cleanliness. From what I'm hearing, most of the failures related to these installs are from crud getting in there during this process. The second most important thing is do it right. Yeah, I know, but also do it cleanly. First thing I'm gonna do is pull the fuel pump fuse, and that's uh, that 15 amp fuse in the corner. And then I'm gonna start the car and let it die. That's gonna do a couple things. It's going to relieve pressure, uh, get fuel out of the um, uh, lines, and then also prevent the fuel pump from priming every time you open the door. Otherwise, it will squirt fuel everywhere, uh, whether you like it or not. So I am pulling out my intake. Uh, this is a IE version two, uh, so yours may be different. It just makes it a lot easier to get to. And then I'm putting down some towels to catch any excess fuel that might happen. But uh, I essentially left the thing sit for, I don't know, a while. All the pressure had pretty much run out. Two hours later. As you can see, not much there. Now this clamp is not reusable. So if you pull this, you need to change it out with something else. I use Odegaard clamps. I'll show you that uh, in the install. All right, so I'm loosening the lower fitting for the hard line and uh, I'm gonna put another rag down there just to catch any residual, which there really wasn't uh, at all. And then I'm just gonna let that sort of slide down and uh, hang out there on the hard line out of the way. Here's a tip to pull the uh, connector. Just use a flathead screwdriver, pry up gently, and that will release the clip. And then uh, I'm using a 10 millimeter triple square to remove this, and you'll see it's sort of spring-loaded, so as you remove these bolts, uh, it will sort of push off of the, the motor. Now, I'm sort of wiggling and then rotating counterclockwise, and I'm just trying to free that bottom hard line from inside the brass uh, fitting area there. And it, it's kind of like I'm just moving it a little bit gently with my fingers, pushing it to the right and then a little bit back so it goes behind. And then it allows that pump to come off easy. Don't have to undo any other connections. Another rag on top just to keep crud from getting in there. Now I did clean my vise and the bench and I'm trying my best to do this as sanitary as possible and I'm just clamping this guy in there with a rag to keep it clean and safe. Wiping some of that excess oil off initially and I'll clean this up again later. But note I do have a clean bench. Please don't do this on your gravel driveway. Uh, now for the AutoTech uh, fuel pump internals. Comes in this box which is quite large for the actual product you get. It sort of reminds me of a white elephant Christmas gift where you try and fool somebody to make them think they're getting a big present and it's really something tiny, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, this is the part right here that I'm putting in. You can see the part number there. And uh, yeah, so how I'm doing this is with a bearing splitter. I got this off of Amazon. It was 25 bucks. I'll put a link in the description. It's a small one and it works out really great. So what I'm doing is I'm slipping this underneath the retaining collar and above the spring. And as you tighten it, you can sort of work it in uh, and sort of t I'm twisting it and pushing down on the spring and you can get it fairly easily above the spring. Now it's not critical that you're above the spring, um, but if you get it sort of uh, not completely seated, a lot of people have been breaking these retainers off. You don't really need it. Uh, you can also go into in between the coils of the spring but I really liked being able to get it right on top of the spring up against the retainer. Now what I'm doing is using uh, these legs that come with the kit. So this is a bearing splitter uh, and a puller uh, all in one kit. Now you might be able to rent this from your local auto parts store. I know you can get a kit from Harbor Freight for about 50 bucks. This was 25 bucks and worked great. Uh, so I've got no complaints and if you're interested in doing this stuff yourself, like investing in the right tools to do it is super helpful. But this is how you can do it without using a press. 
Uh, now I do know people that will use the splitter and then a punch and a hammer and punch it out. I kind of like the pulling uh, method, which is what I'm doing here. I'm basically pulling the retainer up off of the shaft instead of punching the shaft down uh, through the retainer. And it does it with this, uh, this big long screw with a pointed tip on the end. And the cool thing about the, uh, the shaft is uh, it's got a little dimple in it. And if not, you can make a dimple with, uh, with a punch or something. Uh, but it fit right in there and was really easy to, um, to get centered. So I just had to, to move it around a little bit, get it centered. And then I think this was a little 10 millimeter. This is a little quarter inch drive. It doesn't take a lot of pressure and it just worked its way off. Like this is it right here. I'm not, I'm not cheating this in video. This is how easy it was to remove this. Just like that. No breakage. And uh, this is the collar and the retainer now off of that pump shaft. There's the spring. We are going to reuse the spring in the uh, reinstall. Just trying to wipe things down as I go. But again, I'm going to clean this later. Now, this is the tool from AutoTech, and I'm surprised how loose it fits. It is reversible. You can put it up or down. I tried a breaker bar, um, didn't really work that well. My vise rotates, so that didn't help. Um, but what I've seen is a lot of people stripping those out because of how loose that is. So I took the recommendation of just using an impact wrench and it worked really well. Like it took very little to loosen that up with an impact, but for some reason, a lot of torque to try and loosen it with an actual, that was a breaker bar and it wasn't budging. So then we're just gonna remove this whole assembly and then you can see I've got some gas draining from the bottom. I forgot about that, so I wasn't prepared. So a quick, quick couple rags solves that. Just get everything out of there. Um, and this is basically what we removed just now. Those are the stock. And you can see all the crud in there. So if I put this back together without cleaning it, there's a bunch of little particles that could, um, that could get lodged into that pump assembly and cause it to seize. So... Push this through, there's some rubber seals in there, so just be careful, um, but it should come out easily. Now I'm using a chlorine-free uh, brake clean uh, just to clean this off and get all of the crud out of there. And yes, even the outside of the pump, uh, I just want everything to be nice and clean. Try not to spray it into the electrical connector. I don't think that that's necessary. But yeah, then, uh, then I cleaned the... Um, the collar, the retaining collar, and then I'm also cleaning the the AutoTech internals that are brand new, but just to get any residual crud uh, off of them. Then I'm wiping everything down uh, with a lint-free uh, rag so that I can make sure that there's no junk. Like, remember rule number one, cleanliness. So there you go. This is uh, the cleaned high-pressure fuel pump. Uh, now, some of this is a little bit off camera. I apologize for that. But now, essentially, what I'm doing is assembling uh, the internals with the new AutoTech components, and I'm lubricating everything with uh, motor oil. This is a uh, synthetic platinum, just uh, regular oil. It has to be clean. Don't use uh, used oil, uh, including this uh, O-ring here. I like to seal O-rings. And I'm just making sure everything slides on nice and easy. So inserting the piston shaft into this top part of the pump housing takes a little bit of pressure because you've got to get through those seals. Just be careful. I found pressing it against the bench helped. And getting a really, really thin coat of oil pretty much on everything for the assembly. It's just going to lubricate it uh, until it can uh, get pressurized with fuel. You don't want it to be dry at startup. Now it goes into the pump, and then I hand tighten it as much as I can, and then I use the AutoTech tool. Again, this tool is required, it's 10 bucks. You generally will buy it when you get your internal. So if you didn't get that, you're gonna need it. And then for torquing this down, there isn't a defined torque spec. I know people have tried to come up with one. I called AutoTech, they're like, yeah, there is no torque spec for that. Just tight, get it until it's snug. Um, so that's what I did. And uh, I checked the VW service manual, and because it's not technically a serviceable part, 
They don't provide any details on, on that, the internals. They tell you how to replace the entire pump, but not take it apart. All right, so now putting it back together with the spring, make sure that your shaft is all the way up and then set these retaining clips in there. I found doing it one at a time actually works best for me. Um, and here's my trick, right? So you can push down on the spring a little bit. If you have a friend, then you can have them hold the spring down and easily do this with your hands. I don't have any friends and my wife breaks a nail as soon as she walks in the garage. So uh, I'm using this same bearing splitter and I'm using that to press down on the spring as I seat the retainers. So I found doing them one at a time worked better than trying to do it two at a time. And it's a little bit of a little game of trying to get it just seated in the right spot. And I uh, will say it took a, you know, a few minutes and a few attempts to get it um, to go in. But I'm just showing you sort of the final version of what I figured out worked the best. And you can see there, I just like knocked it with my heel of my hand there or my thumb. And there you go. Uh, that is ready to go into the car now. Pretty easy. Easier if you have a friend. By the way, dab oil there just for good measure. And yeah, this is it. It's going in uh, just like this. So I am lubricating uh, this piece. This is the actual part that goes in and mates uh, back onto the engine block. And I'm primarily making sure that that rubber O-ring gets lubricated, that blue one, and goes right back in. Now, again, this is spring loaded. So uh, it's going to sit off of the uh, mounting location just a little bit until you tighten it down. So now I'm working that hard line. I want to get it centered inside of that brass fitting. And you'll see right there, now it's centered. I'm not even going to mess with tightening that down for now. I'm just going to leave it just like that and then go ahead and mount the pump. And you can see it's a little bit spring loaded there. So when you tighten this down, what you're going to do is alternate top to bottom to top to bottom and sort of ease it in. Don't tighten one side completely down and leave the other one stuck out. Um, so you can see here, I'm just sort of easing it in by hand. This is again a 10 millimeter triple square and just going back and forth and letting it seat properly. So the torque spec on this according to Volkswagen is 20 newton meters. So that's what I torqued it to. And then after I got that done, I am going in and tightening that hard line fitting and it screwed right in. Uh, I didn't have any issues with it not lining up properly or wanting to cross thread or anything like that. So uh, your mileage may vary, but that was the easy part. And I know a lot of people are nervous about that hard line, but I didn't have any issues with it at all. So I was just careful when I removed it and then recentered it in that brass fitting uh, as I installed and yeah, it went right into place. So, and I just tightened it up uh, till it's tight. Plug back in my electrical connector. And then the last thing I need to do is put this fuel hose on. Now, again, this is an Oedeker clamp. This is a single ear clamp and I have a tool for that. I actually did a video recently on installing my ethanol sensor and I covered quite a bit about clamps and there's a, a variety of options. So go check that out. You can use this or, or the other clamp I recommend is in there as well. Uh, but do not reuse that spring clamp because the number one problem I see is that hose popping off uh, and fuel spraying everywhere. So you don't want that. And uh, yeah, intake goes back in for me, uh, whether you took yours off or not. I just found it was easier to get in there uh, to that lower uh, fuel line fitting. So I'm tightening that down and then replacing my fuel pump fuse right back in its little spot. I like that they give you the little fuse pliers. That's always handy. Some of you didn't even know that was there. Now, when you open the door, it primes the pump. So just for good measure, I'm like opening and closing the door a couple times just because I feel like it's priming it extra good. I don't know if it really works or not, but hey. Uh, so before I even start the car, the next thing I'm going to do is install my high pressure fuel pump tune from EQT. I got two tunes from them in advance before I needed them. And I did that so that I could do the install and be ready to go and not have to wait. So I'm installing my 93 octane high pressure fuel pump tune because I currently have 93 octane 
in the car because I couldn't run E85 until I got this fuel pump installed. So installing the tune so that right away I've got the right thing. Now I'm starting the vehicle and looking for leaks. Not only am I looking for leaks, I'm also feeling for leaks and uh, making sure that there's nothing, you know, back in the backside that you can't see. Uh, look, feeling for cold moisture. And yeah, it's all good. Nothing's leaking. So I can put my engine cover back on. And I went and did another test drive and checked it again. So now I got down to about an eighth of a tank of gas and I'm ready to switch to E85. So uh, what I'm doing is uh, filling up with E85. And while that's happening, I'm switching tunes to my E85, which I needed the high pressure fuel pump for. Now, I installed this ethanol gauge and I'm glad I did. It's super useful, especially for this. So after I filled up with E85, like, I don't know, 12 gallons or whatever, I know I'm gonna be less than E85. I'll probably be in the 60s, which is, which is okay. So what I did is I just sat and idled in the gas station right there at the pump and waited and watched that E level uh, rise, which means that the E85 is getting circulated. Uh, I shook the car a little bit to get the, the fuel to mix. I waited until it got to about 40 and then slowly sort of drove away. And then my final mix ended up being 64.4. So the next time I fill up, I don't have to go through that. I just go straight E. It'll be higher. It'll probably be E75 at that point because I won't have any 93 left in there. Uh, but yeah, that's my process. That's my install. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.